Now look, let's face it, we can't all be fabulous all of the time to all people in all situations. Life just doesn't work like that, but we do have a choice. We have a choice to be fabulous when we need to. All of us, yes, you watching this and me, um, we've all been selling. We've been selling all of our lives, but we may not have always got the outcome or the result that we wanted or that we were aiming for. Why? Well, perhaps we weren't fabulous enough. You see, when you see someone on you or you hear someone saying, oh, wow, you look fabulous. Nine times out of 10, people are saying that because of how that person has presented themselves, how they're walking, how they're dressed. They just seem to have this, this aura around them. It's, it's, and effectively what they're doing is they're, they're presenting, they're selling themselves, just not literally. Now, I've been training people for in sales for over two decades. And some companies have actually said to me, well, can you not use the word sales? Because it just sounds a little bit crass. It just sounds a little bit dirty, a little bit sleazy. So the first thing I do <clears throat> is put up on a slide, sales, it's not a dirty word. Now, now don't get me wrong, if there's any potential future clients on here, I do listen to my clients, obviously. But the point that I'm trying to make is that we just need to accept it. We're in recruitment. Everything we do is about selling. Everything we do is about presenting what we do in the best possible light. Now look, there's loads of recruiters out there, hundreds of thousands of them, and guess what? They won't all be fabulous. They won't have people saying, wow, that's brilliant. Oh, and by the way, so are you. So what does that mean to you? That means that there's scope. That means that there's opportunity for you to be so much better than the masses. Now for me, selling has always been the presentation of the facts in the most appealing light. And yes, of course, there's plenty of other things like the questioning, the listening, and having a great product and knowledge and everything else. But the actual act of selling is about presenting something in such a way that it makes it easy for the buyer to make that buying decision and not have or suffer from buyer's remorse afterwards. But this is all basic, right? But think about the everyday opportunities that you have to present yourself in the best possible light. Every email, email, every social media post, comment you make, articles you write, voice notes you leave, voice messages you leave, text you send, every proposal that you send out, or marketing literature you produce, every advert you write, your website, every call, every online video meeting or face-to-face -face meeting, formal meetings or events, your email signature card and your LinkedIn profile. You see, bottom line, there's plenty of places for you to present yourselves in the best possible light. And my question is, do you? Do you present yourselves in the best possible light? Or as Clint would say, well, do you, punk? I've seen some people do uh, better presentations, and actually better impersonations, but better presentations on selling stuff on eBay or Gumtree. They do this fantastic write-up. They have loads and loads of photographs where they've really considered multiple angles, the lighting, everything's all nice and clean and it's presented because they know that a lot of these people are going to be visual buyers. So they want to be able to present this trainer, this dress, this video, games console, they want to be able to present it in such a way that it makes it easy for the buyer to make the buying decision. So there is a reason why I capitalise the first three letters of the word fabulous, because this is one way that you can increase your chances of getting your products, getting your services, getting your candidates actually bought. Now, stick with me, even if you've seen this before. Yep, FAB, features, advantages, and benefits. Are you still watching? Good, okay. Because I suspect some of you have seen this before. Maybe you've read books on it. Maybe you've got it on a hat. Maybe you've worn a t-shirt. Maybe you've even attended a training course. Maybe you've heard me talk about it before. It's a fairly simple concept. But this is what happens. Now, I've worked with tens of thousands of recruiters. And when I hear them on the calls, this is what I hear. Feature dumping or some people call it feature vomiting. That's all they do. They just go and dump out a whole load of features about their products, about them or their services, and clients aren't gonna buy into that. So let me just remind you, 
features. <clears throat> features are facts about you, your company, your services, and of course, your candidates. Now, the better you understand these features, the better you will be at questioning, you'll sound more credible, and you'll increase your chances of securing interest. The advantages. Now, the advantages is, well, what does the actual feature do for the client? It helps to explain the workings of the feature. Now, the benefits, well, this answers the question, well, what's in it for me? This actually says what it will actually mean to the client. This is how they are going to benefit from it. And usually they should appeal to, the benefits should appeal to anyone or any combination of the dominant buying motives. Now, again, some of you might be familiar with these dominant buying motives, and you know, I tend to train seven of them. So, will this particular product or service save them time? Will it save them money? Will it make them money? Will it make them feel good? It's all to do with image and prestige. Will it give them peace of mind? Will it help them to survive, maybe survive in a competitive marketplace? And will it take away the hassle? Because most decision makers think that recruitment is an absolute hassle. So I don't actually want you, when you're doing your fab statements, to say those phrases. I want you to really think about but what is it that you, your service, your product can actually do that would mean those things. So when you do your pitch and you include all three elements of fab, that's going to really increase your chances of sounding fabulous and therefore increasing your chances of securing the outcomes that you want. So. Many people talk about feature dumping, the fact that, oh, we've got a database and we've been around for 15 years and we specialise and blah, blah, blah. You know, this is all okay stuff, but it is just feature dumping. Those features are only going to be relevant if that represents the answers to what the client's pain points are. If that's important to the client, then of course you're going to mention those, but you don't just feature dump. Let me give you some examples. Let's say the client has had a bad experience with recruiters who are relatively new, uh, inexperienced in their sector, and they don't always get good quality candidates quick enough. Now look, obviously we would have found these things out from our questioning. So if that was the scenario, I could say something like, well, here at fab for you over the past 15 years, we've developed our sector specialism and built up a, a network of industry specialists, which means that when you have a requirement, you'll have direct and immediate access to fully qualified individuals who have demonstrated that they can perform to a high standard, allowing you to get your projects back on track and to meet your client deadlines. So there you go. Hopefully you can see the FAB in there, but as this is a little bit of a training session, let's just break it down just to make it really super obvious. So the first feature mentioned was the 15 years. The second feature is the fact that we're sector specialists. The third feature is the fact that we're industry specialists. And I said a network of industry specialists as opposed to database. And then you start to move into the advantage part. And you know it's moving into the advantage part because we're saying which means. So that when you have a requirement, you will have direct and immediate access. That's an advantage. Oh, okay. But you'll also uh, have introductions to these fully qualified individuals that can perform to a high standard. Oh, okay, that's good. So we're really getting them interested now. But then the benefit, now this is the one that's going to relate to their pain points. You're going to get your projects back on track. Phew! And you're going to be able to meet your client deadlines. Double phew! Now you'll notice, and if you have been trained on this before, that sometimes the advantages and the benefits, they sort of merge, they overlap. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter because a client is not going to say after your pitch, oh, by the way, you did really well on the F's and the B's, but I wasn't quite understanding what the A was. I'm sure you've missed out on the A. They're not going to know the fact. Even if you did an F, B, A instead of an F, A, B, it really doesn't matter. So the fact that this person would have direct and immediate access could potentially be saving them time. The fact that they're fully qualified individuals could actually give them peace of mind because these people can do what they say they can do. And don't forget those benefits, they have to sell back to the pain points. You know, getting your projects back on track could mean survival. Meeting your client deadlines could now mean that actually you're going to get paid. Uh, and, and, and maybe even a feel good factor, the fact that you've got the job done and you can now go on and tender and secure other business. So look, in summary then, in order to sell effectively, You've got to come across as fabulous. You have to know the client's pain points. You have to know your product really, really well, as well as your services and your candidates. And you've got to have the confidence to be able to package that 
into an FAB statement. And of course, you'll need to close it off to get some form of commitment. But that's for another time. This is only gonna be a short session. We're not doing closing on this one. Now look, I don't know if I'm being fabulous on these sessions or not. So, you know, maybe I could do with some improvement. Maybe I could do with some of your guidance of how I can be more fabulous. So do what I've asked from before, and that is, yeah, connect with me, follow me, send me a lovely message on LinkedIn, email me, give me a call if you want to find out more. So thank you in advance for that. And I'll finish off with just go out there and be fabulous. And of course, remember, stay physically, mentally, and the crucifix. Just going to get back to my darts. Last three darts I had all landed in the triple 20.